So in 1990, when I came uh, to this glacier, I stood right on this boulder, put my foot out right onto the glacier, and uh, took my first measurement. Your challenge is really your physical endurance and the setting up an efficient way to do things. But that's what makes your observations valuable because you make so many of them across so many different places in such a short period of time. This is just one measurement. And obviously the last two days, you know, we've marched around these glaciers. Uh, we're gonna have covered about 10 miles to get those 200 measurements. Do that for 30 years on 10 different glaciers. And you get an idea of what it takes, you know, just to one little, you look at those graphs and you see a data series, a time series. Even for an individual glacier or a series of glaciers in one range, it gives you an idea of the amount of effort you would need to put in. The story is the same. It doesn't matter whether we're here on the Easton Glacier that's retreating. There's not a single glacier in this mountain range that's advancing. You know, there's not a single glacier in the state of Washington that's advancing. Uh, you can go to Sweden, Norway, the Alps, Switzerland, Austria, Italy. The glaciers are retreating. You go to the Caucasus Mountains, the Himalaya Mountains, the Hindu Kush, the Tian Shan Mountains. Glaciers are retreating. Go to the Andes. Doesn't matter whether you're in Peru, Argentina, Chile. The glaciers are retreating. It's it's that the story is the same, and that's to me that's phenomenal because you think of uh, you think of natural processes as you know sometimes uh, as having variability. You know that uh, that some glaciers would be advancing, and there are a few, but essentially it's just the same story over and over. It doesn't matter where. glaciers in New Zealand advancing, uh, there's a couple glaciers in Alaska, but in the United States uh, I could name, I could count on my fingers and tell the number of advancing glaciers. We have thousands of glaciers in this country, 10,000 glaciers. And so it's, it's, not even the, it's not even a pocket, there's just a sprinkling of a few glaciers in advance. The Eastern Glacier isn't thinning at the top, so it's one of that group of about 30% of the glaciers in the North Cascades. With our current climate, not you know, looking to the future warming, uh, can survive. But even with our current climate, most of the glaciers in the North Cascades uh, would disappear. Some of the glaciers still have uh, some substance to them, and, and glaciers like this glacier behind us, 85 meters thick at its thickest part. If you're losing uh, a meter a year, in terms of thickness, that's that's pretty severe, and so uh, it could take quite a while. But it all depends on the size. So if we go to the Wind River Range or even the North Cascades, some of the bigger glaciers uh, can take 50 to 100 years to melt away. Some of the smaller ones are you know, just five or 10 years away. 